important reaction between a monocyclic saccharide and other molecules is the formation of a glycosidic bond. The anomeric carbon in a cyclic monosaccharide plays an active role in the formation of a glycosidic bond. A glycosidic bond is a bond between the anomeric carbon and the oxygen of another molecule. For example, glucose reacts with methanol to form two new molecules. The glycosidic bond is between the anomeric carbon and the oxygen of the methanol molecule. The beta version and the alpha version form. Now that you're aware of the glycosidic bond and how it forms, let's take a look at a few disaccharides. First we'll look at sucrose. The two structures on the screen are equivalent. The one on the right is typically drawn in organic chemistry. But here, the anomeric carbon of the glucose played an active role in bonding to the fructose. So the glycosidic bond is relative to the glucose. In this case, it's an alpha glycosidic bond. Next, we'll look at lactose, which is a disaccharide that has a glycosidic bond between a galactose and a glucose molecule. The glycosidic bond is relative to the galactose because the glycosidic bond is formed between the anomeric carbon of galactose and the OH on the glucose. And because the glucose is on the same side of the ring as the CH2OH on the galactose, it is a beta glycosidic bond. And finally, we'll look at maltose, which is two glucose units bonded together by a glycosidic bond. And relative to the glycosidic bond of the glucose unit on the left, this is an alpha glycosidic bond because the CH2OH is on the opposite side of the other glucose unit. Now that you're aware of how disaccharides are formed and what a glycosidic bond is, we'll look at three common polysaccharides, starch, glycogen, and cellulose. They are all composed of many glucose units held together by glycosidic bonds. I want you to identify the glycosidic bond and determine if it's alpha or beta. We'll begin with starch, which is composed of amylose and amylopectin. Amylose is a smaller polysaccharide composed of approximately 4,000 glucose units joined by alpha glycosidic bonds. Amylopectin is a larger polysaccharide. Its glucose units are also held together by alpha glycosidic bonds. But this larger polysaccharide has branch points. We can see the alpha glycosidic bond that holds together these glucose units in amylose. We also see the alpha glycosidic bond that holds the glucose units in the main chain of amylopectin. Also note, at the branch point is another alpha glycosidic bond. You need not be concerned with the carbon position numbers 1, 4, or 1, 6. I want you to be able to identify the glycosidic bond and determine if it's alpha or beta. Next, we'll look at glycogen. Glycogen looks similar to amylopectin. And finally, cellulose. Cellulose, unlike the other two polysaccharides, is held together by beta glycosidic bonds. I also included the structure for amylose below the structure of cellulose to compare the beta to alpha glycosidic bond. Here are some additional images that you could study from to identify the glycosidic bonds 
in these large polysaccharides. And finally, I'd like for you to know three reactions that involve monosaccharides. First, reduction using sodium borohydride. Recall reduction is addition of hydrogen or the loss of oxygen. The equilibrium between the cyclic form of glucose and the straight chain form of glucose lies primarily towards the cyclic form but the reduction reaction drives the reaction towards the straight chain form ultimately to reduction. So compare the straight chain form of glucose to glucotol, the product. Where did the reduction occur? Compare the structures. After analyzing all of the carbons in the chain, you should notice that the aldehyde in the top of the glucose chain is reduced to an alcohol there is an addition of two hydrogens to that group which is consistent with the definition of reduction. Also notice the rest of the chain remains unreacted. The next reaction is oxidation. Here it's clear that the alcohol group at the bottom of the chain is oxidized to a carboxylic acid group. Recall the definition of oxidation is the gain of oxygen or the loss of hydrogen. So it is clear the alcohol group lost two hydrogens and gained one oxygen to become a carboxylic acid. And finally, phosphorylation. A phosphate group is connected to the primary alcohol in a glucose chain. Where the CH2OH was at the bottom of the chain is now become a CH2 phosphate 